Hi, I'm Lieutenant Governor Spencer Cox. Unfortunately, very few people understand Utah's trust lands. They don't understand where they came from, why we have them, and why they're so important to our school children here in the state of Utah. The purpose of this video is to give you more information about why Utah's trust lands are so critical to the future of the state of Utah and our school children. As states entered the Union, federal lands were appropriated to them to provide financial support for specific public institutions. In 1894, Congress allocated parcels of land called trust lands to the new state of Utah. Most trust land parcels were allocated by apportioning the state into townships, each six by six miles, and dividing each township into 36 one square mile sections. Utah was given sections two, 16, 32, and 36 in each township, resulting in scattered land ownership throughout the state. In total, one-ninth of the state, or seven million acres, was granted to Utah as trust lands, and Congress required these lands be used exclusively to support public institutions. Along with these land grants, Congress also established permanent endowments to help fund and support 12 state institutions, including public schools, state hospitals, Utah schools for the deaf and the blind, teaching colleges at state universities, and public buildings and state reservoirs. The largest beneficiary by far is Utah's public education system, which claims 96% of all trust lands. Nearly 100 years later, despite selling off nearly half of the original land grant in the first few decades following statehood, Utah had done little to grow these endowments. A concerned group of educators, legislators, and other stakeholders organized and advocated for an independent agency to manage the state's trust lands. In 1994, CITLA was established and took over management of 4.5 million acres of surface and mineral estate. CITLA developed a business model to maximize revenue from Utah's trust lands. In its first year, CITLA nearly doubled the Permanent Education Fund from $50 million to $94.5 million and helped grow all permanent funds to a combined balance well in excess of $2 billion today. CITLA generates revenue from oil, gas and mining leases, grazing, telecommunication sites, real estate development, renewable energy projects, land sales, and other commercial and industrial development. Entirely self-funded at no cost to taxpayers, CITLA takes a small portion of trust land's revenue for operations and deposits the remaining revenue balance into each institution's permanent fund. A separate agency, the School and Institutional Trust Fund Office, manages and invests these permanent endowments in a diversified portfolio intended to protect and grow each endowment. Proceeds from each permanent fund are distributed annually to each beneficiary, which uses it for its most pressing need. Utah Schools for the Deaf and the Blind might use their distributions to enhance student reading and technology programs, while the Utah State Hospital might opt to support patient therapy and education resources. And each public school in Utah receives annual funding from the Permanent School Fund. Every school has its own school community council, made up of teachers, parents, and principals, which determines how to spend its discretionary funds, with the sole restriction that funds be spent on academic projects. <laughs>